Hey guys! Earlier this week, my friend Karen sparked up a great conversation on social media after joking with her husband that it's his job as a husband and a father to lock the doors at night. Then she tagged me in the post and challenged me to back up her claim with scripture in my next video. Man, I, I love this. I don't know about locking the doors, but I'm pretty sure that the idea that the man is responsible for making coffee is biblical. I don't know exactly where to find it, but it's somewhere in the book of Hebrews. I'll show myself out. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 says, The husband's body is not his own, but he yields it to his wife. I'm actually taking that out of context, but go lock your doors. I've been looking all over this book for a verse or a story about locking doors. Oh, wait! Luke chapter 11, verse 21 through 22 says this, When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own house, his possessions are safe. But when someone stronger than him attacks and overpowers him, he takes away the armor in which the man trusted and divides up the plunder. There it is. Go lock your doors or someone will rob you. Jesus! Actually, this is a parable, and that means there's a lot more to this verse than meets the eye. Let's dive in. Ironically, right after talking about prayer at the beginning of chapter 11, Jesus goes here, straight into the topic of spiritual warfare, and that's not an accident. If you would, grab your Bible and open up to Luke chapter 11 and follow along. If you don't have a Bible, that's okay. Pause this video and go grab one. Find Luke chapter 11. We will be here when you get back. Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute. Circle that. It's going to be important and we're going to come back to it in a minute. When the demon left, the man who had been mute spoke and the crowd was amazed. But some of them said, By Beelzebul, the prince of demons, he is driving out demons. Others tested him by asking for a sign from heaven. Uh, there's no denying that Jesus has power. So far in the book of Luke, we've seen Jesus cure all kinds of sickness and diseases. People with leprosy, people who have been paralyzed. He even raised a teenage boy from the dead during his funeral. He's been casting out demons and seeing people made whole again. There's no denying Jesus has power. The only question now is, where does that power come from? The Pharisees look at him and say, he can drive out demons because he is one. They're not just astounded by what Jesus does, they're astounded by the way he does it. See, according to their religion and traditions, there are rules to casting out demons. Rules that we don't find in the Bible and rules that Jesus doesn't seem to follow. The first one of which is you have to know the demon's name. The thought was that if you know the name of the demon, that you could command the demon. You could use it like a handle to get a hold of it and pull it out somehow. And everyone here is amazed because Jesus just broke their belief about exorcism because this spirit was mute, meaning that Jesus can't ask this spirit its name. And the Pharisees can't wrap their heads around this. You know what? He does this differently than us. He has a power that we don't. A power that says, I don't care about the rules that your religion made up for demons. And so they come to a conclusion. He must have an inside track to the spiritual world. And they don't conclude that Jesus has power beyond anything they've ever seen or experienced because he's the son of God, but that he must have an inside track because he is a demon. Well, Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Any kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and a house divided against itself will fall. Jesus is quoting Abraham Lincoln now. Or maybe it's the other way around. If Satan is divided against himself, how can his kingdom stand? I say this because you say I drive out demons by Beelzebul. Now if I drive out demons by Beelzebul, who do your followers drive them out by? But if I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come. Jesus looks at the Pharisees and said, Listen, Satan is evil, but he's not stupid. A house divided against itself cannot stand. All you need to do is look at a divided family to know that. If Satan is fighting Satan, what can he possibly gain? But if I'm not doing this by Satan, which is a stupid idea, then the kingdom of God is standing before you. It's an audacious claim of Jesus. I can do this because the kingdom of God has come and I am the king. And then he says, let me tell you about the spiritual realm. And he tells the story. 
When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own house, his possessions are safe. But when someone stronger attacks him and overpowers him, he takes away the armor in which the man trusted and divides up his plunder. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. When an evil spirit comes out of a person, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I'll return to the house that I left. And when it arrives, it finds the house swept clean and put in order. And then it goes and it takes seven other spirits, more wicked than itself, and they go and they live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than at first. He says it so matter-of-factly. He explains it all in simple language, as if all of us have seen it and know it. Jesus says, there is a strong man. There is a Satan. He has followers, other demons. They do take possession of people. They're after people. See, from the very beginning, Satan knows that he cannot touch God. So he'll attack us because we're made in the image of God. And if he cannot attack our father, he'll attack his kids. And for every one of us, we are in a battle. And then it says, but... If a stronger man comes, takes that guy, wraps him up, and throws him out of the house, guess who's in charge now? Jesus has just come into my life, and I have the Holy Spirit. But if the house is left just clean, then the Spirit is going to come back. Because every spirit wants a tool. And if you try and clean up your life and put it in order, but leave it empty without Jesus, they're going to come back with a vengeance and you are going to be worse off than when you began. And I realize even as I'm reading this, I've seen it before. I've seen it a lot. When someone cleans up their life and says, I've got God or I got sober, I cleaned up my life, only to find that seven months later, they're not just where they were, they're in even deeper. Have you seen it? And Jesus goes, that is the spiritual realm at work in all of our lives. And we see Jesus building it up. He says, my spirit is what saves you. It's not cleaning up your life. It's not a self-help book. It won't work. You cannot stand against the evil of the world without me. I know. I've tried. Jesus says, I am the strong man. Without me, you can try and clean up your life. But man, if you don't keep me in charge of the house of your life, you're open to destruction. And the crowd is eating this up. They're on fire, going crazy. And some woman in the crowd just wants to cry out a blessing to Jesus. And she does. God bless spiritual women. And she can't contain herself. As Jesus was saying these things, a woman in the crowd called out, Blessed is the mother who birthed you and nursed you. Blessed is your mama, Jesus. Essentially, she yells out, Hail Mary, full of grace. And he replied, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Circle, highlight, or underline that. Jesus looks back at the woman and goes, No, 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 don't change the subject. Leave Mary out of this. Blessed is the one who hears who I am and follows me, who obeys this book. What does this have to do with spiritual warfare? Because without obedience, the enemy is going to try to come back into our life and is going to try and take us out. Jesus says, I am the strong man now, but you can't just give me your life and then leave me out of it. Jesus has still got to be in charge of the house. You need obedience to Jesus. Why? Because there is an enemy that knows the weakness of your defenses, and he's looking for a way back into your life. And if you say, I got this on my own, no, you don't. He's coming for you. So lock your doors. If the enemy is looking for a way into your life, which doors are unlocked? What areas of your life still remain unguarded now that Jesus is there? Uh, where have you heard the word of God and not obeyed it yet? Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27 says, Do not give the devil a foothold. Don't give him anything in your life to grab onto. The rest of that chapter, Ephesians chapter 4, will tell us how to do that. It'll say, if you're lying, speak truthfully. If you have a problem with anger, don't let it lead you down the road of sin. If you're stealing or greedy, find a way to give generously. If you're gossiping or cursing, use your words to build others up. The rest of Ephesians 4 will tell us how to shore up the weaknesses in our lives, how to lock the doors. 
What other areas of your life are unguarded? What doors are not locked that Satan is going to go for? Whatever it is, secure it up. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ our God forgave you. But you can't do it on your own. You can't just try and clean up your life and put it in order. You have to bring strong man Jesus in and secure your life with obedience to him. Where are the doors unlocked in your life? Because that sin has got to go. Jesus says that is what spiritual warfare is really like. It's not an accident that right after talking about spiritual warfare, Jesus says, blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. It's the key to spiritual warfare. Hey, thanks again for hanging out with me digitally. Um, if this has been a help to you, feel free to share it. Like and subscribe to get more mini devotionals. We're just trying to get the Word of God into your life in these little snippets. If you'd like to hear more stuff like this, let me know what questions or topics you'd like for us to cover. Blessed is the one who hears the Word of God and obeys it. Lock your doors, and we love you guys.